Good morning, beautiful people. Happy Saturday, all Shabbat Shalom. Check this out. I learned something new, right, that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm sure for those of you guys that read the Bible, or even if you haven't, you would have probably heard sometime or another that when you're sure when Jesus comes back, he's going to return like a thief in the night, right? Now, how do you guys actually know what they meant by a thief in the night? Now, check it out. Now, for those who are watching, he won't be like a thief in the night to them, you know, because they're going to be ready. They're going to be on their post. But let me explain to you what that little analogy, thief in the night, meant. Now, if we think about a thief in the night now in our generation, what we think about? We think about somebody breaking into our house or, or not like being real loud, coming in real on the slide. Nobody hears him come in. He come in. He may even tie you up, beat you or something like that. But come in just pretty much steal everything from under your nose, right? Right. That's not what they were talking about. Okay. So, back in the day when they were still Y'all better get out that bathroom turn that light off. When they were still doing sacrifices and stuff like that to the Lord, what happened was the priest who had duty, because they had a priest on duty at all times, so... If it was your night to be on duty, you were there because there was always to be a fire burning, right? So, if you had duty that night, your your job was to make sure that that fire stayed burning all night. Not like a raging fire, but just enough to keep the embers going or whatever, you know. So, it, during the when the morning comes, when it's time for the morning sacrifice, it would be really easy to stoke that fire back up. Get it going so they can do the sacrifice without going through all this extra labor work and wait until the fire gets hot enough. Now, if you was on watch and you decided not to stand a proper watch, um, in the military and navy, we call it gun deck in the watch. I actually want the captain's mask for gun deck in the watch before that is nothing pretty, nothing pretty. So I can relate to this, even with standing watches doing prayer at midnight. I can relate to this. Would you move? Can you wait till I'm done with the video? You trying to read. This glass is there. All the glasses right there. You gotta reach in front of the camera. <gasps> okay, so. So what happened was, if you decided you want to gun deck your watch as a priest, meaning not staying a proper watch, and you wanted to go to sleep because you was tired or whatever, you know, God didn't care that you was tired. You were supposed to stay in a proper watch because you were on duty, and it was your time to watch and do what was required of a priest. So if they decided they were tired and they wanted to run off somewhere and go to sleep for a while, you know what they would do? They would put the clothes and make it really, really hot so, you know, it wouldn't burn out. So they could go take a nap and by the time they wake up, the fire would still be going. Check it out. What they failed to realize was that there was a watch commander on watch every night who came around during the night to see if you were standing their proper watch. Right, so they had another priest that was on duty as well that night. Nobody knew who that priest would happen to be. And he would come around, he would come in and he'd check the fire if he don't see you around anywhere, if he found you somewhere sleeping. What he would do, he would go get one of them hot coals off that fire, you know, and he would kind of, just kind of like, you know, burn off all the, uh, make sure it's not blazing hot or whatever, but just kind of get it to where it's nice and, you know, nice and hot. And he will come, he will tiptoe in. He will tiptoe in to where that uh, priest that was supposed to be on watch, that's gun decking, that's sleeping. He will tiptoe in there. And mind you, they had on robes. You know, they still wore robes and everything. So he would tiptoe in there. And he would need my water. Alone, stop. Look at the bathroom light off. Stay down some Okay, thank you. And he would take that coal and he would. Lay it on the priest that was asleep. Lay it on his robe. And you know what happened? The priest, I said, no, don't cut the water back on. You cut it back on, I'm going to pop your hands. Get out of there. So what would happen was the warmth from that cold would be on that robe. And what would happen, it would send the priest into a deeper sleep. Because you know, like in the middle of the night, you may be a little cold and you throw that cover on you. And you start warming up, it's like, mm, 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 and you go into a deeper sleep because you're nice and toasty now. Yeah, but what happened a few seconds later was he realized his high pots was on fire, his robe was on fire. He'd get up and he'd run out of there without his robe. I mean, he wasn't naked under the robe. They had certain garments that were required to wear. But his robe would literally catch on fire and he would 
wake up and like, oh, you know, because if you on fire, you're going to try and take off whatever's on fire, you know, so they would get up, the road would be on fire and everything, and they would run out of the temple wherever they would stand and watch it, and people would know that you were gun deck and watch, and that, that it was shameful, and if you did, that's just how you got in trouble. So they knew you was gun decking the watch. You weren't standing a proper watch. You were up there jacking around, sleeping on watch, not following God's commands. And um, yeah, so there was there was a punishment for that for gun decking the watch. Yeah, so guys, that's what that's what um uh, that analogy. Hold on one second, please. Hold on. Okay, guys, so that's what would happen um, if they were caught not standing a proper watch the priest. You know, that's how they would uh, would uh, get caught and they'd be in some, some, some huge, huge trouble. So, um, that is what that analogy, thief in the night, means. You know, so guys, I wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, when you're reading your Bible, you've learned something new. So now when you read it, you can actually read it in context how God designed for you to read it. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff I want to share with you. But, um, but you know, just take it one step at a time, you know, because there are some things that are out of place and things that were added, you know, to the scriptures over time. But here's the thing. If you don't understand the Lord's feast, which people have tried to do away with, after some years or whatever and the people that don't do their due diligence like the bible said be a good workman and study the scriptures and go back and see if these yeah. things are true then you kind of just like overlook this stuff and you read it all out of context and you don't understand yeah. and it's really un hard to understand what god is trying to Mom, say which is a simple message you know it, it, it's Mom. hard for those here in the western Mom. world to understand Mom. thank you very much to understand it because they don't do the proper research, you know. So, but other than that, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. But I'll share some other things with you soon. So, all right, love you. What y'all say? See you.